Being consistent in your golf swing is as simple as controlling what the pelvis is doing. Now, why is the pelvis so important? It's important because it's gonna allow you to control the low point of the arc, the path of the club, the strike on the face, the launch angle, and ultimately the desired distance that you have. It's time for a transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. Now, what I have here is I have a little bar that I've built. This is a, a drill that I do all the time and a drill that you can do in your house. You don't need a bar, you can use a wall. But in effect, what you're trying to do is the following. You get set up and you put your butt up against the wall. When you make a backswing, you want your right butt cheek or your trail butt cheek to stay on this wall. When you start to come down into the strike, I want to feel like the left or the lead butt cheek is going to hit it. And then when you come through, you're going to keep the hip on that. So you're going to go, I call it cheek, cheek, hip. And when you start to do cheek, cheek, hip, what you're gonna do is you're gonna control where the low point of the arc of the swing is so that you can predict the launch angle of, of this golf ball. Now, I've got a seven iron in my hands and I will typically get a launch depending upon uh, a, a couple of different things, ball position included, I'm gonna typically get a launch somewhere between 17 and 19 degrees and that's gonna give me a fairly consistent distance. I'm gonna get about 165 yards out of this when I'm trying to hit this full. Now, what I love about this drill is this is a drill that you can do in your house and you don't need a golf club. All you do is take a club, you put it across your chest like this and you make a backswing. Make sure that your right cheek is on that wall. Then when you come through, you get your left cheek on the wall or lead cheek and then hip. So you're just gonna go cheek, cheek, hip. Cheek, cheek, hip. And when you start to do that, you're gonna feel how your body is gonna work properly. The arms are gonna follow and the club will follow to that. But you've gotta work with what you're doing with the core and specifically what's happening with the pelvis. Once that pelvis starts to ride out from underneath you, that drops the club underneath and all of a sudden my path starts going out to the right. My low point gets behind the ball. This would create fat shots, thin shots, all kinds of different things are gonna take place. And so what you need to make sure of is, is that you know exactly what you're doing doing with your pelvis and the way to do that is this drill. So I'm gonna hit a seven iron here. I'm not gonna hit this hard. I'm gonna show you some different things that are gonna take place as a result of this, but we'll just hit this baseline one here. Okay, now what I get when I hit that shot is I get a fairly consistent strike. You can see I didn't swing hard at that, but it went at my target. Now what we wanna do is after we've done that, we want to find out, well, what is it? What do we get when we hit that? Like, what, what is our launch angle when we hit that? So, let's do that. Okay, now, come on up to the front here with me so that you can get a look at this because this is going to be very interesting. As we start to go, what you're going to see is, is that I'm going to be between 17 and 19 degrees in my launch with this 7 iron. So we look down here, I got 17.6 on that, an apex of 54 feet. Now as I start to do this and I start to increase speed, my launch angle is going to stay pretty much between 17 and 19, but the apex is going to change and ultimately the distance is going to change, okay? All right. Let's get these two out of the way here. Put that back there. What I love about this drill is, particularly in the studio, I can do my practice, cheek, cheek, hip. Cheek, cheek, hip. And then I can set up to the ball. Cheek, cheek, hip. Hit that one. Now, Glance down there, 17.9 and a 54 foot. Let's keep going, let's see what we get with this one. Seventeen five. so you can see the consistency that I'm getting in these shots. 17.5, 17.9, 17 17.3. And what I'm feeling when I do this and what you're gonna feel when you do this is you're gonna start to feel a ball first strike. You're also gonna start to see your golf ball starting pretty much on the line that you intend. When we increase speed, which I'm gonna increase here, that one there was only about 101 miles an hour ball speed. So now I'm gonna increase the speed on this one. We should get something very, very similar in the launch. 
And I, I hooked that a little bit, so I pulled it. So that's gonna take that launch and make it a little lower. That's 16.1, but that's a shut club face, so that's why that went a little bit lower. And what I forgot to do was I forgot to do this drill. Can't believe it. Come on, right cheek, left cheek, left hip. Okay, good. Now here we go again. Okay, that was excellent. Ball speed picked up. That one went right at my target. In fact, it went into my target. Now come on up here. So the last, remember I told you before I was about 100, 101? So ball speed got to 109. Apex lifted to 76. Remember I was at 54 and right in that area. Look at this, the launch goes to 18.6. So I go from 17, I'm in my window, 17 to 19. That's what I'm trying to get. And that's what you're gonna get when you start to, to use this wall. The, I call it the breed bar, but you use a wall in your house. Just get in there every day, five minutes a day. That's all you have to do. And you're gonna start to increase the consistency of your strike. You're gonna get predictability. Just cross it up like this. Cheek cheek, hip. And there are many of you that when you start to do this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna go, wow, this is a really hard drill for me to do. I, I don't feel like I have the flexibility or I, I lose my balance. Yeah, and all those are reasons why you don't do it in your golf swing. Maybe the muscle isn't there. Maybe you aren't stretched enough. Maybe the hamstrings aren't allowing you to do it, whatever. But you don't, when you do the drill, you don't do this fast. You just do it to get used to it. Cross it up like this, right here like this. And now you're rotating to here, rotate to there, rotate into there. Let's see what we get here. Again, I'm gonna go a little bit faster. See if I can do it. So I got a little bit too much speed on that one and I came off the bar there. And so that's why that one there, this is interesting. Come on up to the front, because this is interesting. Again, my goal is 17 to 19, that's 19.3. So that's no good for me. I know it's .3, but that's no good. Now, look at what the numbers tell me. I started that ball to the right and I had right spin. So I'm underneath with an open club face and I came off the bar there, which is why the launch angle went up and the ball went right and then it went right again. I gotta get better, I gotta do more of this drill. This is the reason why we're doing this because when I went out to play, I had struggles with this and I thought, well, if I'm struggling with this, man, we all can learn from this. So I'm gonna do a little bit of this drill, more and more. So get in here like that, here, it's that lead hip, that lead hip really has to get in there and stay on that, that lead cheek. You gotta do this drill, I'm telling you. You do this drill five minutes a day, that's all. If you can get one in the morning, one in the evening, fine, 30 days. And then you keep doing this, you will get, I'm telling you, you will get comfortable with this, 30 days. Here we go. This is gonna be speed, this is gonna be target driven, this is gonna have intention. Good strike there. Oh, this is a great one, right at the target. Oh, just a little short. All right, so what we're getting is great consistency and predictability with our launch angles. And as a result of the, the pelvis staying back, we also have predictability in the low points. When you start doing this drill, and you've gotta be religious with this, you've gotta do it every single day. If you can get twice a day, great, but you gotta get at least one a day. And do that for 30 days. And here's what I'm gonna promise you. Your ball striking is gonna get better. You're gonna have predictability in what you're getting with your launch angles, and ultimately your distance. And Scores are gonna come down. Do this drill, I promise you, you're gonna play better golf. That's our transformational tip presented by Morgan Frank. There are two very important bends in the golf swing. One is forward bend and one is side bend. One of my favorite drills to help you with side bend, well, I'm gonna share that with you now. It's a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. Now, one of my favorite drills. And here's the thing you should, understand about drills. They're always hard until they're easy. They're always difficult until they're easy. So here's what you do. You're gonna take this grip and you're gonna put the, the top of your palm on the bottom of the grip, just like that, okay? So you got the top of the palm on the bottom of the grip. Now all you're gonna do when you get in, you're gonna feel like you're playing hockey. All you're gonna do when you do this is you're just gonna hit 
this ball. And what you're gonna notice is when I come through, look at how much lower my right shoulder is than my left. And the reason why, obviously, is, is that in a face-on view, you can see how much this lead elbow is bent and how much longer this trail arm is down and closer to the ground. So in order for me to get both of them straight, now look at the, ch the angle change in the shoulder. So we start here like this, come through. I want to feel this arm, this trail arm bent, trail shoulder down and underneath. We're not trying to hit this hard. All we're doing is we're just giving this thing a little tap, a little love tap. That's all we're doing here. So we'll do it again in here like this. And we hit that shot. Now, what I want you to do with this drill is I want you to, to move the hand closer to the lead hand. So it's gonna come up that, that grip, but now you're gonna put it where the, the end of the grip is in the palm. And we're gonna go here, do the same thing. And feel what that feels like. And you're gonna feel your shoulders work completely differently. You're also gonna feel your hips work completely differently. And then finally what you're gonna do is you're gonna do the last one is where both hands are on, but it's still split. And now we go like this. That was a really good one. Same thing, just like this. And now you can really feel the trail shoulder as it's staying down. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands on the club the way you do, whether interlock, overlap, tenth, it doesn't matter. But you're gonna get that sensation that you're right there. And again, we start out this drill, we don't do this fast. So now in our first swing with the, the grip back to where we are, don't hit this fast. And what you're gonna feel is you're gonna feel that, that trail shoulder staying really low in there. And what you're also gonna feel is the trail arm is gonna be bent at that strike. That's a power source. That's also gonna get you underneath. That's also gonna help you with the strike. And then you're gonna build up your speed. So that one there, the ball was traveling at 86 miles an hour. So now I'm gonna put a little bit of, a little more speed into that one. That one there's 100. Didn't quite keep that, that shoulder as low as I wanted or the arm as bent as I wanted. Hundred. Oh yeah, that was really good. That one there, that's 111, 112. Right, so now, put a little bit more power. This is again, not full. This is just faster. There's 100 and 120, I hooked it but 120, and again, as you start to increase speed, what you're gonna find is, is that it's gonna be a little uncomfortable. So don't increase speed until you start to get a feel, and you have to keep getting feels. Develop the feel through the drill. Okay, last one here. Feeling that trail shoulder down, feeling that side bend, feeling that right arm, trail arm staying bent. Okay, that's a really good strike. Ball speed up to 118, a nice little draw right at my target. So do this split hand drill. Again, start with that palm right at the, at the bottom end of the, the grip and work it up from there to the middle to on and then to conventional. And once you get to where you're doing that, you'll start to understand what side bend is and how to get that club to come from the inside, how to elevate that shot and hit that nice draw. That's a grip tip presented by Golf Pride. How many times have you been out on the golf course and you lost the impact? You couldn't find it. You were playing great and all of a sudden it's gone. Well, it's time for proving it, presented by Titleist. One of the easiest things that you can do to help you get that great swing back that you lost on the golf course, do you wanna get it again? is to make swings on a downhill lie. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna lift up the back end of this mat 
and we're to create a downhill lie. You can see this right here. I'm moving, but I'm not moving, but I'm moving, but I'm not moving, but the floor's moving. And now, that's great. So there's a nice downhill lie. Now, why is a downhill lie so advantageous for us to be able to improve our impact? Because the reason why you struggle with the impact is you're not moving through the shot. What happens to you is you get fearful and you don't go through the shot. I've seen it in all kinds of sports. Doesn't matter whether it's football, a quarterback throwing a pass and they're, they're getting rushed and they're afraid to get hit and so they fade away from where they're moving it. Whether it's tennis, it doesn't matter. Golf's the same. You come into the shot and you're afraid to go through so you back out of the shot this way and you lose impact. Fat, thin, pulls, slices, all kinds of different things. Loss of confidence. All you have to do is this, get on a downhill lie and let gravity help you get through the shot. You're gonna feel your trail leg get lighter. Don't lean up the hill, lean down the hill. Lean down the hill and then go down the hill. Follow your weight down the hill. Here we go, down the hill. And when you start to make these downhill swings, what you're gonna start to notice is, hey, I'm really moving through the shot now. It's out there, this little instructional thing is out there on every single hole, on every single golf course, everywhere. You have an uphill lie, you have a downhill lie. All you gotta do is face the other direction. If you're going, you got a side hill lie, turn, you have a, you have a downhill lie. Find your downhill lie and make your swings. The other thing I would tell you is when you're done hitting your shot with your driver, don't put it away. Tell your cart partner, hey, I'm gonna walk this time. And you walk a little bit. And you know what? You're gonna stop, you're gonna see, and now you're gonna make some swings. And your partner's gonna go, what are you doing? Ah, you know what, I, I got a little tip. I got a little, I got a little tip. So now, we get that feel. You feel your, your body moving forward. You almost feel like your, your chest is moving up towards a wall. and you keep making that swing, and you keep making this motion, and you keep feeling that weight going down the hill, and it feels like, it might even feel like you're sliding. Great, slide, I don't care, move. Gary Player had that walk through drill where he would hit, and then he would walk. It's the same thing, your weight's gotta go that way. So you get in here like this, you feel that weight moving forward. Oh, that was a really good strike right there. All right, now we're gonna take our mat, we're gonna level it back out again. So Greg, let's drop that mat down a little bit. Right side's a little bit uh, lazy to the left. So you're about good right there. Now right side's gotta go down a bit, perfect. Okay, now I'm back to a level lie. But I wanna feel like I'm on the downhill lie. So now I'm going just like that. And I can have confidence to go through this now, create some speed. And now we get the strike, ball goes out there. It's got the distance, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna swing a little bit, a little bit faster and it will take you a little time to get comfortable with this. First swing, you might not trust it. Second swing, I'm telling you, you're gonna be right back. Feel that body moving down the hill. Imagine you've got a downhill lie and you're going right down the slope. There you go, down the slope. Good strike, good speed. No more of those weak shots to the right. Now you're getting nice draws, nice solid draws. That one there went 188 yards in the air. That's what you're gonna get when you start to use that slope of the property to help you get your weight going through the shot. And that's proven it presented by Titleist. So many people over the last couple of months have sent emails to me, and you can always email us at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. So many people have sent emails. Michael, how do I hit the go-to cut shot? I get nervous under pressure. I want to hit a go-to cut shot. How do I do it? Here's how you do it. There's two drills that you have to learn. The first drill is you have to learn how to control the face of the club. In order for you to hit a cut, this club face has to stay open. The way you keep it open is making sure that your trail hand is underneath your lead hand. 
If I have the trail hand underneath the lead hand, the, the toe is gonna be behind the heel. When I get the trail hand on top of the lead hand, that's when all of a sudden I'm hitting a, a closed face shot. So what I wanna be able to do is keep the trail hand underneath the lead hand, and as we start to do this drill where you grip on this club about, uh, I'm gonna say two thirds of the way down the shaft, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna swing so that we don't hit ourselves in the side with the handle. So we swing through, now you can see how my right hand is underneath the left, the face is up to the sky, through here, and now I go through. So I do that drill. Now watch what happens when I hit this. I should get right spin when I do this properly. So that takes off. Let's go up to the front so we can take a peek at what we got there. Again, I'm not swinging hard there. What I'm doing is I'm showing what that drill does to the golf ball. And what we look at is we look at side spin. That's a right shot for me. That means the ball is moving to the toe. If you're left-handed, you would, it would move to the L, which is still to the toe. You always want that ball curving to the toe when you're hitting the go-to cut shot. So that's the first drill that you're gonna do. And this is a simple one. And what I love about this drill is you do this on the golf course. So you sit here like this, we make this swing, feel the trail hand underneath. Now we get in, same thing, trail hand underneath, and that ball starts out to the left and it goes over to the right. That had about 400 RPMs of spin, had a nice little curve. Now, the next thing that has to happen is you have to have the courage to swing to the left or to the pull side. In order for you to hit a great cut, it has to start down the pull side and then peel back to the toe side of the, of the club. Now, my favorite drill for this is you take the ball, you put it forward in your stance, outside of the lead foot and just inside the strike line. And what's gonna happen is in order for me to hit this ball, I have to move my body forward. The club is now coming down into here and it's gonna start to go over to the left. With the face open, this won't start as left as the path. So that one started left about five degrees and it moved to the right with 946 RPMs of right spin. And, and as you start to learn this go-to, what I first tell you is you've got to get control over the face. That's why I started with the drill where you grip it at, at, at the two-thirds spot. That's the first drill, and then the second one is this. So this is how you develop this go-to cut shot. Ball outside of the lead foot, just inside the strike line. Through that shot, there's another one that starts left, 5.6 degrees, another 952 RPMs of, of right spin. Now, what are you doing to do that? What are you doing to hit that golf ball? When you do that drill, you can't let that thing get to the to hook. It's gotta start left and fade back to the right. What are you doing to do that? So when I do it, I feel like my upper chest is moving, <coughs> excuse me, moving forward and opening. It also feels like it's down to the ground. I don't feel like I'm up in the air. I feel like it's down to the ground. So I get in here like this, come across to the left, my chest. Now I'm not going into regular ball position right here. It's inside the foot now, and it's not on the, on the inside part of the strike line, but it is more forward than I would normally play it. And then we do the same thing. And now I come through there, that one starts to the left about four degrees, it spins to the right with about 630 RPMs of, of right spin. So we keep doing that drill, feeling that chest moving. And you may feel something completely different. You may not feel it in your chest, you may feel it, it doesn't matter. You have to figure out and find out what it is that you're doing to make sure that ball starts to the left and fades to the right. So now, let's see what we can get here. So this won't start quite as left, but it will start left. That ball position looks like it's forward because I'm aiming left, because when I hit my cut shot, I'm gonna aim left. So I'm aiming left now, and now I do the same exact thing. So that one there, it doesn't quite start as far left. That one only started one degree to the left, and it had 341 RPMs to the right, which means 
I hit my go-to cut shot. It started left, only a degree. It's obviously going to start more left when that ball position is more forward and inside the strike line. It only started one degree to the left, and it turned to the right, not 600, not 900, just 341, which is just a nice little what we call a butter cut. Starts to the left, face to the right. Do these two drills. Grip down on the shaft like that, put that ball position forward, make sure that trail hand is underneath the lead hand, and then you're gonna hit the go-to shot. And that is an FJ fix.